Okay. Good morning, everyone. Uh, this is Jorge Reyes. I am an, uh, an Education USA advisor uh, for Oaxaca and Guerrero here in Mexico. And uh, here with us today, we have uh, three reps from University of Wisconsin-Madison, uh, Sarah Bebenek, which I have the opportunity to work before with her. Uh, we have Monique Liu, which is the first time I met her, and uh, Chris Peavy, is that right? Okay, uh, so yeah, so they will be talking us about uh, non-traditional programs in non-traditional times. And uh, I, I think this webinar, it's very uh, accordingly to the times that we are living right now, because uh, yesterday I post uh, this webinar on social media and I kind of put the title, uh, if you have to change your plan, that's okay, but don't change the goal. So I think that's very accurate for, for, for this kind of webinar and this kind of information as well. Um, so yeah, but before they take the stage, I want to share with you uh, what Education USA is about. So can we pass the presentation, please? Okay, so yeah, so the, 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 this webinar is about non-traditional academic programs in non-traditional times. And as I mentioned, uh, Monique Liu, Sarah Benbenek, and Chris Peavy will be uh, uh, talking about these programs. Uh, next, please. But yeah, but what is Education USA? Well, Education USA is a network of advising centers uh, supported by the Bureau of Educational and Cultural Affairs at the uh, Department of State. We have more than uh, 430 centers worldwide, and we are in one, uh, 178 countries. So perhaps this webinar that you will uh, that you will see, not not at this specific moment, but because we are recording it. Uh, so if you are if if you are eager to look for a higher education in the United States, uh, please look for our advising centers all around the world, and uh, I know you can find an advisor wherever you live. Next, please. Okay, so our mission is to promote higher education in the United States. It doesn't matter what you want to study, if it is, uh, it doesn't matter the program. As long as the universities have the program, well, you, you will be able to, to, to get into one of these colleges or universities. And uh, we have, we have, we work along with universities. Uh, as, as for this occasion, we will be working and we will be hosting, co-hosting this webinar with University of Wisconsin-Madison. Uh, so this is one of the universities that we can uh, uh, collaborate along. Uh, so yeah, so we advise students with all the admission process. Uh, we let them know what they should know about the process, uh, about the, I don't know, standardized tests that they may take. Uh, all that information, it's what we do. Next, please. Okay, so I'm, I'm, I'm gonna follow up. Um, okay, so uh, we, don't, we, we don't only offer uh, advising, like personal advising one-on-one, -on -one, but we also do like during these times, we have been actively uh, uh, working with virtual sessions like this one. Okay, um, well, why, did, why the United States? Uh, quality of education, flexibility, and variety of programs. As you learn today in this webinar, uh, there are several programs that may adapt to the needs you may have. Uh, cultural and intellectual exchange. It is known that the US is the, the main destination for many international students, so it will be a great opportunity to know about other cultures and start creating new, uh, a new network of contact uh, a student of an ability to work in two cultures or even three or four uh, because the main goal of a student in the United States perhaps is not to remain on the United States but to 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 keep growing as a student and as a professional though. Uh, next please. So our services uh, as I mentioned it uh, individual and group counseling in an education USA advising center uh, and right now because of the period of time that we are living on 
uh, we have a lot of uh, virtual center meetings. And as this one, which is like a virtual webinar, uh, informative talks and webinars, uh, reference libraries and preparation materials for admission tests. This is uh, 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 some of the services that we offer, but we also have uh, cohort group sessions. Uh, we have several information, a lot of information that will help you uh, to look and to plan a strong strategy to apply for American universities. Okay, and I think that's, that's my last one. Um, yeah, next. Okay, so I, I leave you guys. I don't know who will be first, second, and third. Okay, Monique. Okay, um, thank you, Mariana. Uh, Anna. So, um, hello, everyone. Uh, thank you so much for joining us today. My name is Monique Liu. I'm from the summer term office at the University of Wisconsin Madison. I'm joined with my colleague, Chris Piggy Harry, and Sarah Benvenik to talk about taking summer online credit courses as an international college student as well as some of the non-credit learning opportunities for you. And also, uh, Chris, my colleague, will be giving you an overview of uh, pre-college programs for our high school students, including different types of pre-college programs, characteristics of a good pre-college program. And uh, we are hoping that by the end of this webinar that you will have a better idea of the non-traditional academic programs that are available for you to engage and participate this summer and future summer. As Jorge said that, you know, you can change your plans, but don't change your goals. So a couple of uh, webinar housekeeping before we move on to the next slide. So today the webinar is scheduled for to last an hour and it includes an Q&A sessions at the end. So if you have any questions, um, during the presentation, please feel free to type them to the chat box. And uh, while I'm presenting, I will not be monitoring the Q&A, but um, at the end of um, the presentation, we will lock all the questions and answer them during the Q&A session. And we will uh, follow up with you via email for the questions that we may not be able to cover today. Okay, thank you. So, um, so before I get started, I just want to take a moment to mention about the University of Wisconsin-Madison, and then I'll transition to summer term online courses. Um, as you see in the US map on the upper right of the screen, that UW-Madison is located in the Midwest, and we are about two and a half hours away from Chicago. Uh, we are a public land grant institution that was established in 1848. And we currently have an enrollment about uh, a little bit over 44,000 students. Our students here at UW-Madison comes from all 50 states in the US and also from more than 130 countries across the globe. Next please. So uh, while Anna helped me with the, um, the, um, the slide, yes. Uh, so let's get right into the topic, summer term online course. Next, please. So I want to talk a little bit about uh, the online course characteristics that is uh, specific for the summer. Uh, the first thing is a accelerated uh, course format. So what does that mean? It means that course are uh, courses that are taught in summer term are usually are accelerated because they cover what is usually a semester's worth of materials in three, four, or eight weeks instead of an academic semester, which is typically 15 weeks. So courses usually meet at least four days a week uh, for a few hours each day, and students should expect to spend a an additional few hours each day on reading and other homework. And because of the courses are taught, are taught at an accelerated pace, courses may seem harder for some students. However, please note that the course material taught in the summer is the same as it would be in the fall or spring, or spring semester. The next characteristic is synchronous versus asynchronous. So synchronous learning is a kind of learning that happens in real time, 
This means that you, your classmate, and your instructor interact in a specific, over, uh, specific virtual space though a spe through a specific online medium. So um, in other words, it's not exactly anywhere, anyhow, anytime. So methods of synchronous online learning include video conferencing, like what's happening right now, and uh, live chatting and live streaming lectures. This may be a challenge if you are living in a different location, in a location that is across multiple time zones. Um, asynchronous learning means that um, the learning happens on your schedule, um, on your own pace. So while your course, your courses of study, instructor or program will provide materials for reading, lectures for viewing, and uh, you have the ability to access and satisfy these requirements within a flexible time frame. Um, another uh, characteristic is it's convenient and flexible. So it Online courses give you an opportunity to plan study time around the rest of the day instead of the other way around. And courses materials are accessible online, making special library trips unnecessary and also you avoid commuting. Um, the other characteristics is the discussion and the assessments. So they are, they look diff they are different. So. Discussions in the online environment may offer more opportunity for students to think about and uh, research and even draft your discussion posts and responses. So as I mentioned above, um, the learning, the, the difference between taking a face-to-face -face courses and an online course, the learning environment and the style is really different. So in the, in the next few slides, I will be mentioning about a few tips for you to succeed in um, taking an online course. Next, please. So before we talk about uh, a couple tips for summer success, I also want to address some of the most frequently asked questions uh, we get from students in regards to taking online courses. Um, so the first one is, so how, how long are summer term classes usually are? So it really varies from different uh, institutions. However, at UW-Madison, the most popular courses are typically three weeks, four weeks, and eight weeks. And the second question, are classes harder in the summer? As I mentioned, um, because it's, it's taught in an accelerated pace, um, it may, seem, it may seem harder for some students. However, the content is the content material is as same as what it would be in the spring or fall, fall semester. So the answer is no. Um, next question is, what is it like to take an online course? So you will learn through podcasts, mini lectures, discussion format, online journal, and multimedia. You will connect with your instructor and classmates through collaborate documents, such as wikis, video conferencing apps like Skype, emailing, texting, or other interactive activities. You will also be submitting your assignments online too. Um, and last question, why should I consider taking an online course? So um, this is a great opportunity for you to learn from world-class professors at a top-ranked university. And uh, once you completed your course, um, you will earn an academic transcript and certificate of completion. And then most of all, um, gain knowledge, friendship, and, and friendship. Next, please. Thank you. So um, a couple tips, a few tips for summer success. So the first one is schedule, schedule, schedule. So because the courses are taught in at an accelerated pace, set, a, set aside time each day for your courses using your syllabus and weekly full, full diagram as guides. Participate in class every day, study daily, and stay on top of assignment is very important. Get comfortable with your learning technology. Make sure that your technology is ready to go. This is especially important if, you're if you will participate or submit your work from different locations during summer term. 
So depending on the course, you might need to access podcasts, discussion forums, multimedia presentations, online journals, and more. And you want to check your connections, your laptop and your speakers, headphones, and events. So you will be present and accounted for when it matters. Um, study with a group using video conferences or group chat tools to study with classmates on a regular basis. Um, ask questions. Make sure you understand the finer points of the course materials and your um, instructor's expectations. By asking questions early and often, um, you don't want them to pile up. And then last one is work hard, but enjoy the process. Get, a, get excited about learning, connect with your classmates, and challenge yourself to accomplish your goals. You will be surprised <clears throat> what you can accomplish within a few months and weeks. Yeah. Next, please. So if you're, if you're thinking about taking an online credit course this summer, uh, I would encourage you to talk to your Education USA advisor as he or she will be able to guide you to the programs or courses that are available to you. So on this slide, you will see that um, we, uh, we included the popular summer, su uh, summer subjects <clears throat> for students who, for international students who are interested in taking in summer online courses this summer and future summer as well. Next, please. So um, if you're interested in taking an online courses through our program, here are the four steps. So um, you want to research whether our program or whether the courses is the right fit for you. And then, um, and then, then receive permission to attend our, to attend our program. And then, then um, there's a link um, on the slide is to go on to our website and um, submit your application and then uh, wait for a mission review and decisions your email. Uh, next please. So I just want to mention that we do have a special summer programs that we do have scholarship available. So if you are interested in taking um, one of the three courses that are listed on here, human resource management, marketing in the digital age, or uh, principles of risk management. If you take one of the courses through our program, um, we have a $2,000 scholarship available for you. So if you're interested, please feel free to uh, reach out to, to Jorge, Anna, or me. I will be, uh, we will be leaving our uh, contact information at the end. Um, so yeah, that's all I have for um, um, uh, taking summer courses, uh, taking summer online courses. So I will hand it off to my um, colleague, Chris P.B. Harry. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, Monique. Um, again, I am Chris P.B. Harry. So I'm the Assistant Dean of Badger Pre-College or Pre-College Programs at the University of Wisconsin-Madison. Um, so I oversee um, a few programs at the university that um, support uh, instruction for students in grades K through 12. Um, so kindergarten through 12th grade and um, essentially students to engage in uh, academic enrichment opportunities prior to them matriculating in or prior to them coming to university. So it's really just a way of them to experience the university. Um, but again, um, I'm Chris P.B. Harry and I oversee the pre-college programs here. Um, please go ahead to the next slide. Um, so why pre-college programs or what are pre-college programs? So um, middle and high school students often attend pre-college programs so that they have the ability to develop academic and social skills to help them successfully transition from high school school um, to university and it allows them to be able to understand how to maintain their persistence through degree completion. So while attending pre-college programs, students uh, take on certain learning objectives. Um, those objectives have to do with independence, uh, autonomy, college readiness, and particularly for high school students, they look to have an authentic, immersive college experience prior to attending college. 
not only do pre-college programs have the learning objectives that I mentioned before, but you have the ability to engage in um, sort of opportunities to boost your college application, to uh, engage in essay prep, so writing your college entrance essay. And also taking your pre-college programs allows you to shine above the rest of the applicants because essentially you have the ability to show that you can experience uh, pre-college or experience college life at, as a high school student. Um, and it also shows that you can engage in college level courses and programming. So it allows you to be able to shine um, above the rest of the applicant pool if you haven't, or if they haven't taken a pre-college course. Most pre-college programs are for international students are residential programs. And so what that means is essentially you come as a high school student. Again, the majority of the programs for international students are for high school students. So you come as a high school student and you engage in your academic course, your academic instruction uh, at the beginning of the day. So let's say from nine until three or nine until one, you engage in your academic course. And then in the afternoons and early evenings, the program, they then provide either co-curricular activities for you or social activities for you to either uh, continue learning while you're, uh, while you're not in class or to understand the culture and the community that you are in. And so they provide that instruction for you. And then all the students are housed together uh, in, the, in the dorms or in the residence hall. So it's really that sort of experience that you would have as an undergraduate student. Um, and then obviously all the students live together, um, you study together, um, and uh, that's essentially the nature of a residential program. We do have programs that are considered commuter programs, and these are programs of where the students only come for that portion that would be your academic course or your academic instruction, and then they would go home so they wouldn't participate in any of the other co-curricular activities that would happen during the day. So you would engage or learn with them during class, but not during those social activities. Pre-college programs differ in length. Um, they tend to be, uh, I would say two weeks is probably a, a normal time of a pre-college program and for international programs. But you could essentially go um, to uh, a pre-college program that might last for up to six weeks, depending on what, um, what program you enroll in. Uh, the majority of our programs at UW-Madison UW or that we oversee um, range between, I would say, two and three or sometimes four weeks. Um, international students for pre-college programs tend to arrive early. They arrive early so that you have the ability to acclimatize to, um, to the program or acclimatize to the area that you're in. And they also uh, tend to do international introductions or international orientations for, um, for international students as well as pre-departure orientations of where they will walk you through all the things that you need to prep prior to you coming for uh, a pre-college program. I will tell you that a lot of uh, international students come uh, in uh, to take a pre-college program, so it's definitely something that you should consider. Please go ahead to the next slide. So what I'd like to talk about are the programs that I oversee at the University of Wisconsin-Madison and just walk you through what they are so that you understand them. Uh, so I oversee the Wisconsin Center for Academically Talented Youth and this is a program for uh, students in K through 12. Uh, so essentially what you do is you come and you pick an academic track that would be STEM, arts or humanities. And then after uh, the class, we sort of surround you with academic based or co-curricular learning activities. Um, academic prep as well as study sessions. Uh, and this program is meant to replicate or extend the classroom work that you would have in elementary, middle, and high school. The second program that I oversee is Imaging Self. It is a four credit program with uh, the partnership uh, with our School of Education. And so students come and they engage in uh, topics of art, dance, and theater, and you create a portfolio and a final performance, and you earn university credit for the program. The next program that I oversee is Summer Music Clinic. So it's a program that's been around for about 90 years at the university. It's a music education and performance program for middle and high school students. This is a non-credit option and students have the ability to not only engage in music education and performance, but at the senior level or at the high school level, you can engage in 30 different topical courses that expand your horizons beyond music education. The last program that I oversee is Badger Summer Scholar. So this is uh, one of our flagship programs and it's a program for students in grades nine through 12. Um, and essentially it consists of several non-credit two week courses that are taught by UW Madison uh, faculty. And it really is a course or program of where you have the ability to understand what it's like to be a college student. So again, you engage in your academic track or you pick your academic track 
ahead of time, but it is essentially providing exposure to the undergraduate curriculum and the undergraduate experience. Um, the majority of uh, these courses are in this program are two weeks long, um, but again, this is really uh, sort of your college preparatory program. Please go ahead to the next slide. Um, all of our programs, um, but exclusively the Badger Summer Scholars program um, that I oversee, that I just talked about, um, it is a, a program that has a series that, call, that is called the Jump Forward series. So it's a partnership with admissions and financial aid um, and uh, the campus where it allows you to be able to engage in pre-college topics. Um, and so the workshop series covers um, uh, or is designed to uh, support students in engaging in the college experience. So, you learn the ins and outs of the college application process, um, how to create or craft the best college essay, um, hearing from other students regarding their experiences in college or other pre-college programs. And we hope that with this experience, you will have the ability to competently um, jump into your college journey. Please go ahead to the next slide. Thank you. Um, so, as you know, um, a lot of programs this summer are um, absent of in-person programs, so essentially a lot of programs you are needing to engage online considering um, the circumstance that we're in right now. Um, and so as our programs that I just mentioned, mentioned before, as we're not running those face-to-face uh, -face or in-person, um, what we're doing is we are excited to announce new ways of engaging with our communities this summer. So we'd like to invite you to join us online for a variety of pre-college informational and instructional um, installments. And so the videos that we will be putting out for our communities as well as for anyone who wants to learn about the programs that we have, um, there are a variety of age groups, so K through 12, and they're designed to introduce students and families to Badger Pre-College and to the pre-college arena. And what we want to do is to provide academic experiences to showcase what students will experience in our programs. And it also gives you a snapshot of our extracurricular activities that we have for students. And so, again, as we'd like to engage with you in person, but we don't have the ability to do so, we're hoping that these videos will help to spark your curiosity and bring a little piece of Badger Pre-College to your homes. Um, so the videos will be shared each week on Mondays and Wednesdays. And you can see on the screen, I do have a schedule of the events that we have planned this summer. But again, they will be Monday and Wednesday, sort of starting on June the 15th. And each video will cover um, a general sort of pre-college topic or a topic based off of the courses that we run. So for example, it would be um, a, an Enrichment Wednesday that's focused on elementary school, where we will feature an academic topic based for elementary students and middle school students and high school students based off of the date. Um, so the way to connect with us and to have access to these programs is to engage with us via email or social media. Uh, my contact will be shared at the end of the presentation, but, but I also encourage you to reach out to your Education US advisors who might be able to then pass on my contact information or give you that information as well. We hope that you uh, take the opportunity to engage in a pre-college course or a pre-college topic um, with us or somewhere. Um, hopefully I've given you enough information to understand the benefits of a pre-college program and why you should attend them. Um, but again, please feel free to reach out. Again, my contact information at the end of the presentation. Thank you so much, and I'll pass over to my colleague, Sarah. Great. Thanks so much, Monique and Chris. Hi, everyone. My name is Sarah Bambanek Saborio, and I work with the Visiting International Student Program. We're also known as VIS, and I work specifically with the non-credit program. So, Monique has talked to you about opportunities to earn credit and kind of what the benefits of a credit um, online opportunity are. Um, and I'm going to talk to you specifically about some kind of looking at the idea of non-credit opportunities and then talk to you a little bit about the offering specifically at UW. So if we can look at the next slide. Um, our slide, our first slide talks a little bit about kind of what you, why you might want to consider a non-credit virtual learning opportunity uh, this summer. And there are kind of a few things that might help you consider if this is something that's kind of worth your time and investment. So first of all, um, non-credit opportunities, it's important to understand that a non-credit opportunity means that it's non-credit at the institution where you're taking it. So for example, for UW-Madison, that means that if you take a course with us, you're not earning credit at UW-Madison. But for some of our opportunities that'll be offered later in the year and potentially with other institutions, there is the chance that you could potentially talk to your school and earn credit there depending on what what they'd be looking for as far as requirements so just to have you understand what a non-credit option looks like 
So first of all, when we're talking about non-credit opportunities, one thing that's kind of nice is some of the non-credit opportunities that are being offered right now in a virtual environment are either free or they are lower cost than what um, a full like credit course might be online. And of course, that generally comes from the fact that you're not earning credit at the institution. That being said, free or lower cost doesn't necessarily imply that you're not getting gaining valuable skills or practicing um, important uh, or building important traits and skills that you would need to use later on. So they can be very beneficial learning opportunities and provide you a lower cost option than something that might be earning you credit. Um, as far as in particular English programs, um, English programs tend to offer a lot of engagement with the instructor directly. So I know, for example, some of the programs I'll talk to you about um, involve an English component. And what's really nice is that's going to be a live interaction between you and the instructor. So even though you're not in the same physical classroom together, it gives you the opportunity to really engage and talk and talk with your peers and engage in smaller breakout sessions. So it might feel um, a little bit more like a classroom and it might give you that kind of vibe of being actually in, in a learning space with other people. Um, it also gives you the opportunity in any context to improve and practice your language skills. So this isn't just if it's a language component, but a lot of the opportunities that, that are offered um, for non-credit, you know, take advantage of them to work on your English skills if you're interested um, in, in improving those. And that can be, of course, in the form of listening. If there are opportunities to engage, then you have the opportunity to speak or read or write. And so a lot of non-credit options can give you the chance to at a free or very low cost, really work on your language skills, even though you're not physically in you know, the other country or in the classroom. And then there's a wide variety of, of disciplines that are covered in a lot of non-credit courses. And so, um, and in particular, some of the ones that are designed through UW, um, you can sign up for one course and you'll actually get exposure each week to different um, topics because you don't have to earn credit on any given subject there might be a little bit more um, diversity in what you're exposed to during the non-credit option. And so it might be a nice way, again, for you to diversify what you're learning about um, or diversify what you're talking about and engaging in. Um, and so it might be a nice way to kind of have a, have a broad exposure to some different topics um, through the virtual learning uh, experience. So if we can look at the next slide, um, the next slide presents some of the specific options that are available to you at UW this summer and into the fall. So there are really three main options um, as far as non-credit opportunities through our VISP team. And I'll go into kind of some details on what some of the benefits might be or why you might be interested in, in one of these options over the other. The first is the option in red here, which is our thematic short course. So a thematic short course, what this is, is this is a program that you do actually register for and you would pay a fee for. Um, and this would be a course you would make a commitment to for two to three weeks at a time. And it would have a combination of live and recorded components. So when I say thematic, what I mean by that is, for example, we would potentially have a program that's themed big data. And so you would be interacting with English instructors for a live component every single day of the two to three weeks. And you would have an English class that was academic based. And then you would have some recorded opportunities to learn about topics in big data from faculty and staff on our UW-Madison campus. So it gives you the option to have some kind of academic content as well as some English practice um, and that combination of live like engaging opportunities and then kind of the asynchronous or recorded components that you can kind of do at your at your leisure or when it makes sense for you. Um, as far as the themes, I already mentioned that big data uh, or data science is going to be an option later in the year. And we're also looking at the option of career exploration. So in particular, if you're a pre-college student um, or if you're an, an undergraduate student who hasn't yet decided kind of what you really want to be when you grow up, um, this might be a good option for you because we'll be having you engage with career counselors who can do different activities with you to understand what it is you're interested in and kind of moving you forward on the path of choosing the right major for you. And then that will be the theme that's combined with the English course. So those are the thematic short courses. And again, those will happen later in the fall and potentially the winter, so January of 2021. And those are things that you could look for and I'll provide links later um, on where you could find more information about receiving information and also registration materials for those. 
Next in green is our skills webinar. So this is kind of the opposite end of the spectrum. What I mean by that is the thematic course is something that you show up for for those two or three weeks, you sign up, you pay. The skills webinar is, is totally different in that these are offered usually in collaboration or in connection with your Education USA office. And these are one-time webinars. So these are things that, for example, we're going to be leading one in the next month on study skills and time management. All of us now are working right remotely or studying remotely. And for some of us, maybe that's great. And it's really easy to manage your time and stay focused. And for our other people who are used to more interaction and, and appreciate more interaction on a daily basis, it might be a big struggle to do that. And so we're going to be offering a, a one hour webinar where we're giving tips on how to maybe focus your studies and stay motivated and be able to kind of focus on what it is you want to do every day. And also focus on things like test taking skills and, and other skills that are relevant for us. So those are things you can sign up one at a time. They're free. You can attend a whole bunch of them if you'd like. Um, it, there's something like this webinar where they, you can either watch them live and ask questions or you can just view it afterwards so it could be recorded. And you would learn about these again through your Education USA offices. Now the last option is one that's actually beginning sooner and this is our Academic English Conversation Club. And this again is something you would find out about through your Education USA office. Um, but these are conversational English classes that are sessions that are three, week long, three weeks long and they run in sessions. So it could be that we're actually starting one um, with uh, Mexico Education Office, Education USA office in June. And then we'll be rolling out or starting new sessions later on in the summer. And what's really great about these is they're a small commitment. So you commit to three weeks of classes. They're twice a week for an hour. And then you get a little bit of homework in order to prepare for the classes. So we'll provide your English teachers, we'll provide you with an article. We'll, the first class will kind of review the article and do some discussion and vocabulary and prepare for the reading. You'll read for homework. And then on the second day, you'll also meet with your English instructor in a small group and discuss the article and do some activities. So it's a great opportunity to practice your English in a small group setting, to, li to engage live with your instructor. And if you don't have a lot of time, um, or again, don't have a lot of financial resources, this is a great opportunity to still connect with, with instructors and practice your, your English. So those are kind of the three options right now that are available for non-credit opportunities. And any of these um, information will be available just by reaching out to us. Or like I said, some of them will actually be set up directly with your advisor uh, at your Education USA Center and you could talk to, to them first. So the next slide, we wanted to kind of conclude most of our presentation with a look forward, which is the idea that, right, we're all in this kind of virtual learning environment right now, but I know we're all hopeful for at least some component of, of like in-person learning at some point, right? And in particular, if you're an international student, of course, the academic content is important, but we all know that a big, big part of being an international student somewhere is the opportunity to go and experience the culture and see new places and engage with people who are from the country that you're, you're from the institution that you're studying with. So I just wanted to put up here, these are two of our programs that we're very hopeful um, will be running in 2021. The first is UW Advance, and this is actually the short-term thematic program that our virtual program will be based off of. So it's a two to four week program where you have both English classes and academic content. And you can find out more information on our website about that program. And again, those will be opening up in 2021. And then our Education USA Academy, which is a pre-college program. Um, and this is meant for international high school students to come. It's a college preparatory experience in the summer. So this would be July of 2021. And this is something where it might be a great opportunity to engage in some of Chris's or some of our um, learning opportunities this summer and then look forward to experiencing campus in person next summer. So we'll wrap up by saying on the next slide, uh, thank you so much for taking the time to listen to this presentation. We hope we were able to give you some valuable information about different, first kind of the general benefits and structure of virtual learning, but then also understanding that there's a lot of different opportunities out there that can really cater to anyone's needs. 
and help you continue to move forward in, in your educational goals, even though right now we're all learning from home. So thank you so much. On the next slide, it shows our um, contact information. And all of us are very, except for Chris's, we'll have to put that in the chat. Um, it seemed to have been blocked out. But we will um, connect you all with our contact information. And please feel free to um, reach out to us with any questions, visit our websites. And we're happy right now also to answer questions if you have any in the chat. Yes, please, if you have any questions, you can write them on the chat box and we pass them to the reps. I have one. Uh, what about winter programs, Sarah? So as far as winter programs, we are looking for the UW Advanced program in particular, the, we are hopeful that that will run. We typically have a three-week program in January. That's an in-person program on campus. It's a non-credit opportunity where students, it's a residential program. You live on campus for three weeks. Um, it's open for undergraduate students. And that is um, a possibility. Of course, that's something we'll kind of know more towards fall if that'll be something that we can offer. And that would be a theme of big data. Okay, and I guess uh, that gives experience of a uh, of, uh, winter in America as well, right? Yes, China. which would be a big adventure for all of you coming from the south. Yes. J January is one of our more exciting months in, in Madison. Okay, uh, so uh, I, I don't know if you get any questions directly, Monique, Chris, or Sarah. Okay, well, uh, I, uh, one of the participants, well, we have an Education USA advisor for, uh, from Paraguay as well. So mm -hmm. I think they will be sharing the presentation as well, well, the webinar as well. Uh, mm -hmm. So if there is, uh, I don't know, if, if we don't have any, any more questions, I think uh, we can wrap up. Uh, well, my name is Jorge Reyes, and remember this webinar will be recorded and will be put up on our social media uh, account on YouTube. Um, so yeah, uh, I think that's uh, that's all from, from me. I don't know, you guys, you wanna say bye? <laughs> no, yeah, thanks so much everyone and please reach out if you have questions. Thank you for having us. Take care. Thank you, bye. bye, -bye. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Chris, Monique, and Sarah. Yeah, see you later, bye. -bye.